Hi, welcome to the eighth and the final unit of recombinant DNA technology and bioinformatics. In this unit, I am going to give you a brief introduction about proteomics and metagenomics. In biotechnology, we have different domics. One of the most common only used one is genomics. Genomics include structural and functional analysis of genes and identification of genetic variation. Similarly, we have transcriptomics, which is about the transcriptome of a uh, organism or uh, proteomics, which is about the protein, different types of proteins and structural variations, which is present in a organism. Then we have metabolomics, then phenomics, enomics. So we have different omics. In this unit, I am going to talk about metagenomics and the proteomics. Metagenomics is a part of genomics. So what is genomics? World Health Organization define genomics as the study of genes and their function and the related techniques. So it includes study of genes and their function. When compared to genetics, in genetics we are considering individual genes, how the individual genes are inherited or a specific group of genes are inherited. But in genomics, we are considering the whole genome, how the genome is inherited or how the genome is functioning, how they are inter uh, interact with each other, how the different parts of the genome is interacting with each other. So it's all about the study at the genomic level not in the individual gene level, not in the chromosomal level, we are studying as a whole. That's why it's called the genomics and that's how it is different from the genetics. It's also including the techniques which is used to, to study the genomics, the DNA sequencing techniques and the techniques used in bioinformatics, uh, techniques used for the prediction, everything included in the genomics. So genomics is the study of genes, their functions and related techniques. It is study the structure, function and inheritance of genome of an organism, uh, it uh, it addresses gene ge all gene genes of a genome. It is not considering independent genes. Uh, it is considering the whole genes and its interactions. So initially, the genomics was all about uh, sequencing of the DNA and sequencing of the RNA and protein. But later, it is developed into more structural uh, developed into study more structural aspects of the genome and more functional aspects of the genome. So now the genomics have the structural genomics as well as the functional genomics. So those are the two different areas of genomics, structural genomics and the functional genomics. In simple terms, the structural genomics is the process of characterizing the physical nature of the whole genome. Basically, it starts with the genome sequencing, uh, but it, now we have the comparative genomics in which we are comparing one genome, the whole genome of our organism with the other organism, or you can compare the one organism genome to all other you know, uh, genomes of the different organism. Uh, we also have the functional genomics. It is study of patterns of gene expression and the interaction of genomes as a whole. So it includes transcriptome, proteome, uh, etc. So, what we are considering here is the metagenomics. Uh, the background for the metagenomics is like the microorganism. Most of the microorganisms are not culturable. We cannot culture the microorganisms in the laboratory. We already know the techniques we are used to, we, we used for culturing microorganisms. So we can do different types of medium. We can use different kinds of medium, different kinds of physical conditions, different kinds of incubation conditions. We already know, you already know about the uh, different types of media used. Maybe the special media, enriched media, the media with the blood or media with some other components. So different types of media exist. But even though we are using different types of techniques, different types of advanced techniques for microorganism cultivation, only 1% of the total microorganism can be cultivated in in vitro laboratory conditions. 99% of microorganisms are non culturable. We cannot culture it in the laboratory. Most of our techniques for identification of a microorganism or manipulation of the microorganism is depending on the ability of the microorganism cult to culture in a large scale. So, the thing is that we have discovered different types of enzyme, different kinds of antibiotics and different types of industries are based on microorganism or the products of the microorganism may be enzymes or their components. But all these applications are came from 1% of microorganism because that, those are the microorganisms which can be cultured. Another 99% of microorganisms are cannot be cultured. So we cannot actually, we do not know actually anything about those microorganisms because it is not culturable. 
maybe this microorganism is producing a novel enzyme maybe this microorganism is producing an antibiotic but we don't know yet because uh, we don't have the methods to cultivate this microorganism in a in vitro cultivations so what metal genomics is actually doing is like uh, it aims to find the industrially important genes and the proteins from unculturable microorganisms so it's a method of finding uh, like the applications of the unculturable microorganism so how do we do that the traditional method here you can see the culture techniques in the culture techniques what we do we take a sample from the environment or any places uh, it will have different types of microorganisms and we are actually making the pure culture we can do this streak plate spread plate variety of techniques can be done to make it as a pure culture once we have the pure culture we can characterize the genome of the organism but in metagenomics the thing is that most of these microorganisms are cannot be cultured uh, if you in the quantitatively 99% of them cannot be cultured so what we do we do not culture the microorganism instead we isolate the dna from all these microorganisms now we have the techniques to isolate the mi very minute amounts of dna so we isolate whole dna from it and now we have the dna and all the dna is sequenced so essentially the microorganism cannot be cultured but we can actually isolate the dna from the microorganism and we can sequence the dna we can compare it with the other dna so that we will get an idea about what this microorganism is actually doing so that's how the metagenomics works so in the traditional genomics we need to have the we need to know the microorganism we need to have the pure culture so that we can know about the genome but in metagenomics we cannot culture the microorganism uh, they do not grow in the uh, in vitro conditions so we will just take the dna from the mvm samples and we will just culture it uh, we will just sequence it so we do not know about anything about the microns how they look like what is the shape of it whether they uh, how what are the substrate they are using we do not know anything any cultural or morphological characteristics of a microorganism in a metagenomics but we know the dna sequence that's why it's called a metagenomics so in the traditional way we need to know all of this we need to have the techniques for this its uh, cultivation its morphology its biochemistry everything before we are doing the genomics part but in metagenomics we do not know anything about the microorganism only thing we are knowing about the microorganism is the dna sequence based on the dna sequence we can actually make predictions of the characteristics of this organism or we can find the whether this organism is producing an antibiotic or not or whether it is producing a novel enzyme or not these all things can be find out using the dna sequence that's the power of metagenomics so metagenomics is a study of genetic material recovered directly from the environmental samples so the dna is isolated directly from the environmental sample without a culturing step so such type of dna is called e dna or environmental dna so uh, in this metagenomics we are not studying a single microorganism we are actually studying the microbial community so there will be different types of microorganism maybe uh, like uh, hundreds or thousands of different types of microorganism will be present in a small environmental sample so and we are studying all the microorganisms present in a particular sample together and it is independent of sampling methods the nature of samples abundance of the microbial so uh, it's a new method of study uh, it directly assess the genetic information without doing any culture thing like thing so mm, uh, we are directly sequencing it and using bioinformatics tools we are actually uh, like using these techniques to make predictions so here is the uh, uh, schematic representation we are taking the environmental samples and from the environmental samples we are extracting the edna or environmental dna once we have the edna we are going for the sequencing so the only thing we are knowing about the microorganism is that uh, is the dna sequence of the microorganism and by comparing this dna sequence with the other microorganism sequences or having some software programs we can actually make predictions in metagenomics which can be again divided into structural metagenomics and functional metagenomics in just like the uh, structural genomics and functional genomics in the structural metagenomics we are actually studying the uh, genomic structure of the organism but in functional metagenomics we are studying the uh, possible functions of the genes so here we have the structural metagenomics functional metagenomics or we can say the meta transcriptomics it's a, a study of transcriptomes based on metagenomics or meta proteomics we are studying the proteomics from the metagenomics so in metagenomics the only thing you need to remember is that we do not know anything about the microorganism 
because these organisms are not culturable so they do not grow in the in vitro medium they are just taking the dna from the embryonic sample and sequencing the dna so based on that we can predict the protein proteomics of the samples or transcriptomics or anything so here is schematic representation of uh, microbial community analysis using metagenomics and applications of metagenomics metagenomics has uh, is a comparatively new technique and it has wide applications uh, one of the major application of the metagenomics is the production of industrial enzymes as we know that uh, the industrial enzymes uh, has very much importance and significance in the many industries so using metagenomics we can actually do the screening in the bioprocess technology we have study the primary screening and secondary screening metagenomics is a method of screening we can actually screen for a particular enzyme without culturing the microorganisms so that's uh, say novel technique and uh, by using this technique we have found so many novel enzymes for example cellulase cellulase is of special interest because cellulose is one of the most abundant polysaccharide on earth and it is composed of glucose but not many organisms or not many enzymes are able to degrade the cellulose if you are able to degrade the cellulose into glucose this glucose can be used for many purposes maybe we can use it for producing edible products we can use it for the biofuel production so it has tremendous applications if we, if we can convert cellulose into glucose but the enzyme which is responsible for con conversion of cellulose into glucose uh, is very difficult to find so using metagenomics uh, people are able to isolate and characterize uh, these genes and the genes which is uh, cellulose genes actually found using metagenomics has unconventional characteristics they have improved uh, yield and everything and they are more tolerant and they are active in the alkaline pH so by using this technique we can actually do the screening then people have found the lipase uh, using this uh, metagenomics from the sed marine sediments and uh, this lipases have uh, it's used for giving distinctive and desirable flavor and odor to the milk pectinase thermostable and thermoactive pectinase can be found is found uh, from metagenomic analysis amylase uh, which has a low temperature optimum has been found using uh, this metagenomics technique so so many different types of enzymes can be novel enzymes can be found industrially useful enzymes can be uh, screened using metagenomic analysis uh, some antibiotics are uh, discovered using metagenomics like uh, tubomycin a and b then bioactive compounds anti cancer agents can be found it is it is now it is starting to be used in the healthcare industry for the personalized metagenomics there is a famous study regarding the gut genomics the microorganism present in the gut and after the study they have concluded that gut is our the second brain because our emotions and everything is controlled by in a way partially controlled by our gut and uh, in this control uh, the gut uh, the actually it is not the gut controlling our emotions it's actually the microorganism present in our gut has the capacity to control our moods and emotions so it has more to do with that so it is used for personalized metagenomics the obesity is related to the microorganism present in our gut so then it is used for mapping human microbiome how it is changing in response to different diseases uh, it is used for identifying the novel pathogens outbreak and uh, it is used also used for better understanding of the complex diseases so in, in environmental uh, biotechnology or environmental conservation this metagenomics can be used to, to find xenobiotic degrading microorganism or bioremediation cleaning up of the environment especially the oil spills and investigating and monitoring wildlife uh, health in agriculture the plant microorganism interaction can be found because of the most of the microorganism which is interacting with the plant cannot be cultured so this method can be used to find the old microorganism which is interacting with the plant and it is used for understanding the soil microbiota and the health of the soil based on the microbial diversity and it's also used to control soil borne diseases so it has got many applications this is another schematic diagram representing the applications of the bioinformatics in the next session i will be talking about the uh, steps in metagenomics analysis thank you